this is really funny. The car that's parked behind us for the past five minutes is actually a car we've seen several times in the last seven years. It was owned by Rigola and Jörg from Switzerland, whom we know really, really well. And we were also in Paraguay when they sold it to Jenny and Simeon. And now the new owners parked right next to us. Hola, Frida. Huh? Que pasa? Was denn los? Huh? This is Frida. She's the dog of Marcus. She's a real sweetie. She likes to play. Huh? So Helen is... Hi. <laughs> Helen is going down into the dungeons of our motorhome. This is uh, her storage uh, space and uh, we're cleaning everything up um, to get our motorhome ready for storage. This is what Helen has in her, yeah, in her box. I have pretty much the same on my side and uh, bit by bit we're cleaning everything up, we're sorting everything out and um, the police was here this morning to get the paperwork all done, to do the inspection and tomorrow morning we go down to the aduana, to the customs, to hand in all our papers and then Sunday morning we hopefully are finished with everything and then we move into an apartment before flying out. So here's Helen mm -hmm. in the mood for cleaning today. It's a nice sunny day, not too cold. Yeah, everything so has to dry. Everything has to dry. So here we are. <laughs> After handing in our paperwork at the customs office in Costco, we stumbled upon a colourful procession around the corner of the Plaza de Armas, one of many processions during this week, as we later find out. We've been so busy with getting everything organised that we didn't have a clue that June is the month for celebrations in Costco. Almost done with cleaning our motorhome when Kirsten noticed that one of the back tyres oh, yeah, was losing it. air. Vinny 2 is going to be stored for a long time here in Cusco and so we're forced to change the tyre. Our first time. We've never changed one before. We already noticed in Ecuador a few months ago that a screw is stuck in the tyre but for some reason it never lost air until now. We have two spare tyres, but they're heavy and not easy to get off. When we bought Vinnie 2 from Stefan and his family, he taught us how to change tyres, but that was seven years ago. Fortunately, it's not rocket science, and with the help of some of the other campers, we managed quite well. So, uh, managed to get it on, put the, the lugs in. So our last job is taking out blocks and stuff. You have to put the blue jack back in. No. Keep going. Keep going. This tire looks okay. We have to measure the. Oh, 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 oh,
It's okay. Oh, alles klar, ich war ein bisschen dazwischen. Oh, pardon. Es ist okay. Ich war ein bisschen zwischen. Sorry. Sorry for your hands. No, no, it's okay here. I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. It's, uh, these things are so heavy. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Did you fix hours? it? It's okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. it's okay. We're in full cleaning mode with a concert in the background. Helen is doing the nasty carpets. So I don't know what time it is, but we are almost finished. Helen's cleaning the last bit. And uh, we're fixing Foxy, but it looks okay now. We took everything out, cleaned everything, and we're trying to put everything back into place now. That should do. So we finally finished. Uh, I don't even know what time it is. It must be around five o'clock in the afternoon, Sunday. We're parked in, we've got the tarp on, we've cleaned everything. Helen's already down at the apartment, bringing some stuff down that we need. It's almost a full moon night. And we're just walking down to our apartment with the last bits of pieces. Helen's been up and down already once. How are you feeling? Tired. Yeah. We've got a lot of stuff. Yeah. I don't know how many kilos, but it must have been, uh, I know it was at least nine in my rucksack. Yeah. And I had seven kilos of water, so that's 16 yeah. in the bag. That's a lot. Yeah. So this is our apartment. This is, uh, I'm at the front door and you come in. This is the kitchen. And then we've got this giant bathroom that's literally bigger than our motorhome. It looks all super duper clean. And then uh, you go through here into the big, big lounge with a sofa and a bed and Helen. The bed fits about four. Sofa is so-so. It looks more comfortable than it actually is. And we've got all these Cusco goodies like the llamas and stuff like this. We actually have a big TV screen, but I don't think we're going to put it on anyway. So, we are treating ourselves to a really nice meal. We have a wok noodles, wok noodles and we have something with skewers. We share everything. We're hungry. Go ahead. <laughs> Breakfast in our apartment. And it's freezing cold in here. We only have 13 degrees. Um, Outside it's sunny, but this place is really, really cold and noisy. Did you sleep? We had, we had parties going on. It was a Sunday night. We had parties going out until two o'clock, the boom, boom, boom music. And then people left. They rang the bell. The first people to come rang the bell twice. Oh, maybe they were out partying. Came with all, all loads of... Um, oh, maybe they were on a bus. Yeah. I don't know. But I thought that was a bit of an odd time to come out uh, with all your all your luggage. And then the next group came at six. They clink, they, they rang the bell at six. And then she started doing breakfast at quarter to seven. And that was pots and pans and banging and... And then the dog barking and the cat uh, meowing. So See, we're just off the main square. This is the uh, Plaza de Armas in Cusco. It's nice and sunny out there. It's we're probably sweating buckets when we go outside and need t-shirts and shorts, but in here it's just cold. Today it's a World Cup qualifier for Peru in Australia. The fans are out. Australia and Peru are set to face off in Qatar today, with the winner assured a place in the World Cup 2022. Australia, nicknamed the Socceroos, come into the playoff finale on the heels of a nail-biting 2-1 win against the United Arab Emirates last week, which earned them a spot in this decider. Peru finished fifth in the South American World Cup group, giving them one final shot at qualification for the World Cup that takes place in Qatar from November 21st this year. A public holiday has been announced by the Peruvian government for today, anticipating that much of the country will be keenly following the game that kicks off at 1pm Peru time. The only previous game the two countries have played against each other was in the 2018 World Cup in Russia, where Peru won 2-0. There is a huge public viewing screen set up at the Plaza de Armas, and we can feel the excitement of the fans, being football aficionados ourselves. 
For some reason, there are technical problems to get the huge screen going. It's already one o'clock, and the national anthem should have been being played. We were hoping to hear thousands of Peruvians singing along. Along with all the others, we wait and wait, and eventually decide to walk through the streets to see if there are any other screens showing the match. In and outside every restaurant, cafe and shop, the people are glued to the monitors, but the game is really boring. So now we're watching that game in our flat, in our apartment. It's a super exciting game, isn't it? <laughs> One shot on goal in 90 minutes. Oh no, that must be two now, two because minutes. Australia... Two shots on, on two, target. Two, two shots on target. Both from Australia. The, the cloud outside is very quiet and we've got one minute to go and then we have extra time. The crowd is still down there but nobody's cheering anymore. We're now watching it in our apartment with our sofa on, cup of tea. We only watched the last 20 minutes but it's completely boring. Oh, oh, oh. Through. On their way, they were. One chance in 90 minutes, two chances in 90 minutes. Uh, we don't hear any screaming outside. No, uh, we could hear them. They were ahead of us from what, when we were watching. Mm. We could hear them and we heard a big no. So we thought, oh. Penalty shooting. Something's going to happen. So yeah, Australia was through. Mm. But a very bad game. Honest, neither of them earned it. But then they're not going to get very far. They're in a group with France and Denmark. Mm. They're not going to get. They're not going to get there. Well, they have a half a year to practice. <laughs> I need to do a lot of practicing. Yeah. So, I call it um, uh, um, group fodder. Mm -hmm. Cause it, the Peruvians that... will be yeah. disappointed. Yeah, they will. So here we are in the office. It's 10 to 6 in the evening. <laughs> uh, Kirsten's in bed with fleece and hat because it's so damn cold. Um, I don't even know what the temperature is, but it's... Uh, 13 degrees, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think... 13 degrees inside. Yeah, that's the problem. Toilet outside. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, really cold. We're making egg mayonnaise sandwiches. Mm -hmm. We bought these lovely bread rolls. Mm -hmm. <gasps> yum, 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 yum. We got halam some mayonnaise. I have mine with butter mm -hmm. or margarine, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. We're heating up another bit of water for our hot water bottles. Let me check the temperature. Well, our hot shower uh, about an hour ago must have warmed up the room to 14.6 degrees. Fring freezing. Throughout the month of June, various institutions of initial, primary, secondary education, as well as universities and institutes of the city, perform typical dances of the region at the Plaza de Armas. Today, School kids perform different traditional dances from Cusco, showing the ongoing importance of these dances to the local community. They look awesome in their colourful costumes and the competition between the groups is high. Before the start of the dances, the kids line up in one of the side streets next to the Plaza de Armas, where teachers and parents dress the kids, put on their makeup, and prepare everything. Throughout the waiting time, the dances are practiced over and over before the real competition starts. Each group has to perform three times going clockwise around the main square of Cusco. They're accompanied by live music from flute players and drummers. 
In front of the main cathedral, the mayor of the city and the judges are watching the dancers, and you can tell they love it too. It feels like the whole town of Cusco, plus all the neighbouring communities, have come together today to support the young dancers and to celebrate the ancient tradition that is still handed down from generation to generation. It's a very colourful and wonderful event to watch. You can feel the energy and excitement buzzing from the kids. And don't forget that Cusco is over 3,400 metres high. Dancing on the hard cobblestone streets like this in high altitude would be a killer for us. The kids must have practised for weeks and are really proud to perform in front of thousands of people. Every dance with its costumes and story is different. We have no idea who is actually the winner in the end, but it really doesn't matter. All of us, the kids, the parents, the teachers and us watchers are part of a wonderful event in this ancient city. It's great and humbling to see that beautiful traditions live on and are enjoyed by humankind for centuries. After hours of watching, we're exhausted, and so are the kids. They really give everything they can. This looks really uncomfortable. Maybe we should learn a different dance, otherwise we won't be able to get up. There's a full moon over Cusco tonight. Thanks to the fact that our apartment is only a block away from the main plaza, it's a lot easier for us to see Cusco at night. No doubt it's just as beautiful and the streets are busy with tourists and vendors. Watchful eyes of Pachacuiti, the ninth ruler of the Kingdom of Cusco and Emperor of the Inca Empire, young people practice for the next parade or procession. It's peaceful and safe during the early evening hours in Cusco and we enjoy a stroll through the well-knit streets. Corpus Christi is a Catholic festival that is always celebrated on the ninth Thursday after Easter. It falls close to the winter solstice in June. During the Inca period, the Incas took their sacred mummies in processions around the main square of Cusco. Ceremonial rites were performed to pay homage to the mummies, one for each Inca, a total of 14 Incas. When the Spaniards arrived, around 1542, they wanted to impose their customs and festivities and statues of virgins and saints dressed in costumes were taken around the Plaza de Armas. The beginning of this festivity is on Wednesday, one day before the procession, with the departure of each saint from its temple of origin. After arriving at the main plaza in Cusco, the statues of the saints are taken to the cathedral and remain inside until the next day, when the procession takes place. On Thursday, all these people take their saint or virgin out of the cathedral and the procession begins. The order in which the ten saints and five virgins come out is the same every year. The virgins are adorned with an impressive array of jewels and luxurious brocades. After the long procession, the saints are brought back to the cathedral where they remain for seven days. The next day, they're taken back to their churches, followed by dancers, musicians and fireworks. We just stumbled into a procession here. 
And these llamas could be real. All our packers, I think they are. Our final meal in Peru, falafels. Helen has a banana, strawberry juice. She's having the dessert before the main meal. <laughs> I'm drinking a Coca-Cola, not very often, but today I feel like it because we had an exhausting last day here. Helen is waiting for her meal. Mine is already there. Falafel, can French fries. With I think we get a salad too, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you can tell we're hungry. <laughs> Helen has the falafels with rice and a nice salad. Mm -hmm. We're hungry. For the first time in two and a half years, we're flying again. So we're at the airport, double masks. And uh, it's been quite a hectic year. Uh, coming through uh, Helen's um, hand luggage. Backpack just fit into the box. We squeezed it in. The guy said we have to pay extra. He said, no, no, it's gonna fit. And Helen squeezed it in. He was quite impressed. And now we're at Cusco Airport flying to Lima in uh, an hour or so. Hopefully. Yeah, every single flight goes to Lima, and then from there everybody's going God knows where in the world. We're going to Mexico City tonight. It's a quarter past four in the morning. I was trying to get some sleep, but it's impossible. It's just cold and miserable here in the airport. Mm, lots of people. This is a lot of flights. Yeah, it's amazing All how many flights. Yeah. We got to Lima at 10 p.m. and our next flight to Mexico City was already at 6.25 a.m. the next morning. Going into a hotel room wasn't worth it, so we stayed at the airport all night without any sleep, of course. We were hoping to get great views of Lima flying out, but the sea fog is still there in the early morning hours. The flight to Mexico City cost us 150 US dollars per person and is a six hour long flight. It goes straight up the South American Pacific coast and we get some great views of the Andes Mountains.
right down. How are we good to go? How are we feeling? Uh, tired. I'm hungry and thirsty. Yeah. No, you can't plug in. Cheap flights don't offer anything anymore. You can't even see where you're going. No, there's no screen to tell you. It's not the same feeling anymore, is it? Boring. And done with a mask the whole time. Two masks. Yeah, double masks. Some nice murals here. After landing in Mexico City, we had six hours in the airport before our next flight to Vancouver. We know this airport really well and managed to pass the time with yummy food and lots of cups of tea. On our last flight, we finally get the movies. How many are you going to watch? flight from Mexico City to Vancouver and uh, we're tired. This is another six hour flight and costs us 355 US dollars per person. We get into Vancouver at 10 pm and guess what? Our next flight is once again at 6 am the next morning to Kelowna. Hotel rooms near Vancouver Airport are super expensive, it's around 250 US dollars a night. And there's no way we're going to spend that much money for only four hours of sleep. Although totally knackered, we stay at the airport again and even find some rest on some empty benches. We are truly getting too old for all of this flying. So we're leaving Vancouver for our last flight to Kelowna. Snow, still snow on the top of the mountains. That's the airport. Although the first the seatbelt sign has been switched off. We recommend that you keep your seatbelt fastened at all times while seated. We would like to advise you that smoking has been banned on board all Canadian commercial aircraft. Still snow on the mountains. This was all burnt down. You can tell here. Yeah, it must have burnt this year. The flight to Kelowna is less than an hour and costs us a little over 50 US dollars. It was much cheaper than flying into Penticton, which is actually closer to our final destination. Buses. We're gonna be dead by the time we get to person. We are going on the bus. 
buses. Four buses today, this is only our second one. We're back in our motorhome. We have definitely a lot of dead flies in the kitchen window, but the gas is working, the fridge is working. So far. So far. We are plugged in and Helen is doing all the inside oh, stuff. What a nightmare. And I'm doing the outside stuff, I show oh. you. So I already removed everything, but uh, obviously mice had some fun in our outside compartment here. They used plastic bags and made a nest. But I'm going to clean that all up. And then we have a smashed um, front passenger window. Uh, it was probably a mowing a rock from mowing. We have lots of glass inside. But um, AJ or Thomas, I don't even know who it was, um, made, did a really good job in um, just um, putting something on top of it so we don't get anything nasty other than flies into our motorhome. Here's all the glass on the front seat. And there is the smashed window. Hopefully Earl can find one for us and we can get it replaced. It'll have to wait till tomorrow. Yeah, we're not gonna do this today. We have other things to do. But otherwise it seems to be fairly okay. After two and a half years, not too bad. So it's 12.40 and we just got up. No, we didn't. You just got up. I just got up. <laughs> Helen has been up for a while. But Sorting out. We are totally exhausted. Yeah. We had to clean quite a bit of things last night or yesterday afternoon and then we went to bed at around 10 o'clock. That was really good. Mm -hmm. We managed to uh, we did four stay hours, awake as long as we could. Four hours of hard work, mm -hmm. cleaning and sorting and yeah. Then we had a pizza. That was really good. Mm -hmm. And now we are half, <clears throat> half dead, dehydrated. Exhausted, but uh, we're going to do an easy day today. I don't have the strength. <laughs> and it doesn't have the strength to cut through the apple tree. <laughs> Gosh, uh, do I feel my age today? Yes. But um, we take it easy today. There's a lot to do. We can't think about all that right now because then we're more, even more exhausted. Mm. But it's good to be back. <clears throat> And it takes us a few days to just get um, rolling again, and uh, that's okay. So he's, he's going to start. Oh, park. Gas pedal. Oh, God, this automatic. Bremse. Hmm. Gas. Nada. Nothing. The lights are coming on, though, so... Okay, then we have to jump start. So we have attached the batteries. And now let's see if it works. Something went ping. Yes, Minos. So today is the 26th of June 2022. It's a very special day. Helen survived 25 years with me. <laughs> we have our 25th anniversary. We're in Canada and we're going to celebrate it. It's Sunday today. We're going to celebrate it with something really, really special that we haven't done in a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to say? Yeah. <laughs> Helen is still speechless that she's worked for such a long time with me. Mm -hmm. So this is our specialty for today, banana bread. 
It's a recipe that uh, Bob and Suzanne gave us about 15 years ago and we're still making them. Because in Vinny we actually have a really nice big toaster oven. So we can bake our own cakes, which is a very good idea because everything got really expensive here. It's really good to be back in Vinny, our first motorhome that we bought in 2003. We are looking forward to a summer in Canada before flying over to Europe in October. It's right next to the highway.